Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Anna. I'm a clinical psychology doctorate student and I make videos about real world applications to psychology. Go and hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are subscribed, please hit the bell button. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about paranoia in a number of different disorders, as well as in general, and then comparing that with paranoid personality disorder. So first, let's just start with paranoia and other mental disorders that are not paranoid personality disorder. So paranoia can be found in schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders such as schizoaffective disorder, delusional disorder, brief psychotic episode. And these are usually in the form of persecutory delusions and hallucinations. So people thinking that there's someone out to get them, that there's someone following them, that the government wants to hurt them, things of that sort. Schizotypal personality disorder also has paranoia as a component. There's just a general mistrust of other people. Borderline personality disorder also has paranoia as one of the criteria. Although in borderline, it's more in the sense that you're paranoid that everyone's going to abandon you and you're paranoid that people don't have your best interests at heart because they have so deeply hurt you in the past. Paranoia is also arguably a component of narcissistic personality disorder in the sense that narcissists think everyone is always out to get them, that they're a victim and that they're a misunderstood, which feeds into the narrative that they're the only person in the world who suffers and that they deserve entitlement to special treatment. PTSD and other more acute stress disorders also have paranoia as a component. Paranoia at that point is arguably not even maladaptive because in trauma and stress-related disorders, if you're traumatized over something that someone has done to you, it makes sense that your worldview is that people want to hurt you. This is just your mind's way of protecting you and preventing another trauma. Paranoia is also a component of depression and bipolar disorder, as well as depression or bipolar disorder with psychotic features. Negative beliefs about others and the world are a key component of depression, along with negative beliefs about yourself, which can feed into a type of paranoia or the sense that the world is darker and crueler than it needs to be. It's about seeing the world through that more depressed lens. In bipolar disorder, it's the same case as for unipolar depression when they're having a depressive episode, as well as possible persecutory delusions during a manic episode. So manic episodes can either be more euphoric and grandiose or they can be more angry and paranoid. So let's not forget that paranoia can exist during a manic episode as well. And of course with psychotic features suggests that in either a manic or depressive episode you can have psychosis and this can lead to things like persecutory delusions as well. And in that case, the paranoia can look a little bit more like it does in schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders. Paranoia can also be due to a substance. Um, a lot of different substances can cause paranoia, meth, cocaine, other stimulants, weed can as well, hallucinogenics, ecstasy, and so forth. But this is usually temporary unless it triggers a psychotic episode. And there's also normal paranoia, which isn't talked about that much. And this might be paranoia that's not maybe excessive or disruptive enough to warrant a diagnosis, or it could be in certain contexts where paranoia is actually adaptive. So there could just be a general mistrust of people, or there could be paranoia that's very understandable, such as, you know, in a dictatorship where people are often informants for the government, which can get you thrown in jail or even killed, then it would be reasonable to be a little paranoid. Or in a very cutthroat field where uh, some level of stabbing each other in the back is to be expected, it might not be maladaptive to be a little bit paranoid. So now let's talk about paranoid personality disorder because it really is characterized by paranoia primarily and it's the only disorder that is really primarily like that. Paranoid personality disorder is part of cluster A personality disorders, cluster A being the odd or eccentric disorders. Why is it a part of cluster A? Well, arguably because paranoia is such a important component of psychotic disorders. There is a sense that maybe it is somewhere on that level of schizotypy. Because like I mentioned earlier, paranoia is a component of delusions and psychosis and schizophrenia and so forth. So it makes sense that this would be part of the more odd and eccentric cluster that contains other disorders more on the schizotypy scale. So paranoid personality disorder is characterized as a pervasive distrust and suspiciousness of others such that their motives are interpreted as malevolent. 
So this disorder really is characterized by paranoia primarily, this being the main feature rather than a symptom of the disorder where it is for other disorders. It has to be prevalent by early adulthood and it has to have four of the following. It suspects without sufficient basis that others are exploiting, harming, or deceiving them. So for example, if you assume that the cashier is cheating you out of your change for no real reason. It's preoccupied with unjustified doubts about the loyalty or trustworthiness of others. So maybe you spend a great deal of time thinking about how others can't be trusted. Is reluctant to confide in others because of fear that the information will be used against them. So for example, you don't want to tell someone on the plane where you go to school out of fear that maybe they know somebody that works at the school and for some reason they're not going to like you and they're going to try to get you kicked out. Reads hidden, demeaning, or threatening meanings into benign remarks or events. So people with paranoid personality disorder are much more likely to interpret ambiguous stimuli as being malevolent. So it could be, you know, if someone accidentally bumps into you on the street, assuming that they did this intentionally and wanted to really hurt you. Persistently bears grudges. So people with paranoid personality disorder tend to be quite unforgiving um, of insult, insults or slights or anything minor. They might be holding a small comment against you months or years later has recurrent suspicions without justification regarding fidelity of romantic partner. So this could be, you know, accusing the partner of cheating with no real evidence. Does not occur exclusively during the course of schizophrenia, a bipolar disorder or depressive disorder with psychotic features or another psychotic disorder and is not attributable to the physiological effects of another medical condition. So like we we're talking about, it's not, you know, more of a symptom of something else. It's really just a paranoid disorder specifically. People with paranoid personality disorder are generally difficult to get along with, very argumentative, hypervigilant to possible threats. They have a strong need for sufficient self-sufficiency and autonomy because they feel they can only really trust themselves. And they have difficulty accepting criticism, which can look sometimes like narcissism. In childhood, a sign that a child might be at risk of developing paranoid personality disorder could look like solitariness, poor peer relationships, social anxiety, underachievement, hypersensitivity, peculiar thoughts and language, idiosyncratic fantasies. And some risk factors are family members with schizophrenia or delusional disorder with persecutory delusions. So there's very clearly a genetic component. I hope this cleared up any questions about the difference between paranoia and other disorders and adaptive paranoia versus paranoid personality disorder. As always, please let me know in the comments if there's a topic you want me to cover. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe.